some of us choose when we dive into motherhood. Others of us accidentally slip into it and splash around for 18 years or so. (laughs) My mother found herself careening down that slope at the age of 17, unwed and with an unwanted pregnancy. She ran away to some little town in Texas where she got a job as a waitress and began to save money for an abortion. Something changed her mind, and here I am today, the product of a teenage mother. I'm here to tell you that my mom loved me the best she could, and that was enough. I came to understand my mom when, as an adult and mother myself, I learned more about her childhood. My mom's mom's mom died when she was 18 months old from a botched home abortion. My mom's dad (laughs) died of cancer when she was 13. So she spent her adolescence shuffled back and forth between um, her sister's families, and although they did the best they could, she never had a place of her own. And I learned from this, that my mom would spend the rest of her life trying to fill a void and trying to be loved. What was it like growing up with a young, uneducated, poor mom? We had our struggles, like the time she came home from work to find the electricity was shut off, We lit candles and cuddled on the couch, and my mom tickled my back, and silent, self-berating tears rolled down her cheeks. Several times, she was laid off from secretarial jobs, and the desperation was palpable. We ate a lot of Campbell's soup, Spam, and bologna sandwiches. We were vulnerable. On more than one occasion, my mom was the victim of domestic violence at the hands of a man who who she led into our lives. I fortunately was always spared from physical abuse of that kind, and I do remember, however, witnessing a boyfriend fighting in the front yard with an elderly neighbor who had appointed himself our guardian angel. Our guardian nearly bit the boyfriend's nose off while we watched from the bedroom window. (laughs) I still remember the police lights flashing and the two men going at it, and my mom just cried and held me close and rocked me back and forth. I remember her cheek was red and her hoop earring was bent from where the boyfriend had slapped her. I hated that bastard, and soon he was out of the picture. My mom wasn't good with money, but I always had cute clothes. We would go and I would try them on and we would put them on layaway and go back and get them later. She had the most awesome stereo system and record collection, even though sometimes we couldn't afford gas. We would crank up Fleetwood Mac and clean the house. I never really had a bedtime, which was cool with me. I could sleep with my mom most of the time. Although she did have the occasional male friend sleep over, I resented them all. We moved around a lot. I attended six different schools before seventh grade. I learned at a very early age that people didn't think too highly of my mom or me. It was something in their eyes when they looked at us that gave it away. I especially caught teachers looking at us that way. But my mom loved me, and that was enough. My mom loved me the best way she knew. She told me often and demonstrated it in various ways throughout my childhood. One time, I was being bullied on the bus. My mom met me at the bus stop after school, climbed on, yelled at the bus driver and the meanest kid on there, and they left me alone after that. (laughs) She stopped making me go to see my biological father when I was nine because his wife was mean to me. She would argue with them on the phone and then explain to me that it wasn't my fault they were jerks. Sometimes she would play Barbie with me. She taught me how to play rummy, hearts, and solitaire. She forgave me for beating up her boss's son at my eighth birthday party. She stayed up at all hours of night helping me with schoolwork and 4-H projects. She wanted me to be a winner. She bought me a chihuahua for crying out loud. My mom loved me, and that was enough. Eventually, I stopped beating boys up and started to try to find one of my own. My mom didn't like any of the boys I dated, and she really tried hard to dislike the one I chose to marry. She referred to him as money bags. 
Mom came to visit me once after we were married and rearranged my kitchen cabinets and stayed all up all night deep cleaning my house. The next day she left in a huff and called to inform me that she had found my husband's cocaine spoon. Turns out it was a cuticle tool from a manicure kit. My husband has never even smoked pot. But mom was always looking for a reason to hate the man that took me away from her. My relationship with my mom became distant and hard. The first time my mom tried to kill herself, I was 27 years old, six years into my marriage and pregnant with my daughter. I rushed in and began my mission of fixing my mother. I took her to the best mental health facility in Oklahoma. I read everything I could about depression, mental illness, and suicide. From that moment on, we had a role reversal. I began to mother my mother. I loved her, and I hoped it was enough. But here's what I learned from her depression. Love isn't a cure. And you can't force someone to want to live. At one point, my mom and I had a disagreement, and she emailed me to tell me that she never wanted anything to do with me to stay away from her. This hurt me more than the suicide attempt but I loved her and I hoped it was enough. As my mom's health declined because of COPD, she spent a lot of time in hospitals in the last years of her life, and I stayed with her as much as I could. We made a tearful amends on one of these occasions, although I had forgiven her in my heart years before. The week my mom died, we talked on the phone every day One of those conversations was the best gift of love my mom ever gave me. She said, I remember a time when you didn't want very much to do with me. I replied, Mom, you emailed me. You never wanted to see me again. Remember? She asked, did I do that? I'm sorry. I said, Mom, I forgave you for that a long time ago. At the end of our last conversation, she said to me, I always saw Jesus in you. I will treasure those words as long as I live. We loved each other, and it was enough.